Hello everyone. Uh, my name is Zapur Singh Gautam. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Def Conrad Team Village uh, for having me here. Uh, I will talk about automating threat hunting on the dark web and the things that surrounds it. I presented this talk. I presented a short version of this talk uh, at GrimCon, and this is the extended version of it. So uh, let's get started. I will switch off my webcam so that you guys can focus on the presentation here. Okay, so a uh, little about me. My name is uh, Apur Singh Gautam. I go by handle ASG Scorpion. Uh, I'm a security researcher. I started into threat intel or hunting uh, two years back and I've been loving it since then. Uh, I'm currently pursuing my master's in cybersecurity at Georgia Tech. Uh, recently, during this summer, I was doing, I was a research intern at ICSI UC Berkeley uh, doing research in threat intelligence. Some of my hobbies uh, are gaming. I pretty much love Rainbow Six Siege. I sometimes stream it also. I love hiking. Uh, I recently started into lock picking and I have been enjoying it. Uh, I contribute to the security community. Uh, it's like it's my passion contributing to the security community. I'm a senior teaching assistant at Cybrary. I contribute at Station X also and other local security meetups and there are my socials if you want to contact me or hit me up okay so uh, what's today's agenda uh, so we will talk about introduction to dark web how dark what dark web is how to access dark web what tor is what other type what is the difference between dark web deep web uh, why you should perform hunting on the dark web uh, before that we will discuss what is threat hunting and why it is crucial to hunt on the dark web uh, we will discuss uh, the different methods to hunt on the dark web uh, can uh, the dark web hunting be automated uh, what's the pipeline or the ar architecture of uh, hunting uh, automating the dark web hunting then we will uh, discuss a little about threat intelligence life cycle that's uh, how threat hunting on the dark web uh, is analogous to threat intelligence life cycle uh, what steps are there that corresponds to this uh, we will discuss a little about operational security that's OPSEC and why is it important to secure yourself uh, when hunting on the dark web and yeah that's it so introduction to dark web so I I'm sure you must have seen this image a lot of times on the internet that shows difference between surface web deep web and dark web so the surface web is the uh, the sites that are indexed by different search engines that's Google, Bing, Yahoo, etc. Uh, and the majority of the portion of the internet is deep web. Uh, now deep web is any site, any website that is not indexed by the search engine. So this can include your databases, your server instances, or any other different websites that's that is uh, that you can uh, that you cannot search from the search engines. Uh, the third one is the dark web that we will talk mostly about today and uh, this is the part of the internet where you need some kind of software a special software to access the dark web so this can include uh, anything uh, related to like drugs or weapons that's being uh, sold on the dark web or some kind of uh, research or uh, books that's sold on the uh, that's sold there so it uh, so dark web includes several forums and marketplaces where people sell different kind of things so these are these type of things are sold there and this uh, so majority portion of the internet is deep web and people confuse it between dark web and deep web so as you can see only 6% of the internet is dark web and it 80 to 90% is the deep web Uh, moving on so how do you access the dark web uh, so there are uh, several companies or several organizations that offer their own uh, dark web systems uh, or you can call it so the uh, the famous one is tor that's the onion router uh, mo the second is i2p that's in invisible internet project and zero net is also becoming popular nowadays so uh, Tor, Tor has a dot onion domain like the domain name ends with dot onion and i2p is dot i2p uh, talking more about Tor how, uh, what Tor is and how it works is uh, it's it's like a three-layer proxy system if you can see on the image here uh, 
uh, there are entry nodes, a middle node, and the exit node. Uh, the entry node is the entry node is where your traffic goes to, and then it goes through the middle layer and the exit layer, and then goes to the destination. Uh, this way, your data, uh, like your identity, is hidden, and uh, only the also only the entry node is publicly listed. Uh, rest of the nodes are not publicly listed, so uh, it it's like it hides your identity, it hides your IP address, and uh, th uh, these all these nodes are volunteer based systems. So Tor has about like 6,000 relays, uh, and I don't know the number about I2P, but it is uh, it is also becoming more uh, popular nowadays, and uh, the major thing uh, about tor is uh, uh, each node only knows the uh, only knows the ip address of the next node or the previous node so if we talk about here the entry node doesn't know about the exit node or vice versa so in this way the nodes location of the nodes are also protected so there are many misconceptions about tor or uh, the dark web uh, the majority of it, uh, the famous one is uh, uh, whenever we talk about Tor, people think about criminal or criminal things that goes on Tor. Uh, yes, there is criminal side of Tor, but there is a good side of the Tor also, or the dark, dark web. So it's it's uh, really famous among whistleblowers or activists. Uh, there are many countries where free speech uh, free speech is uh, limited. So uh, they can use Tor, uh, like people from those countries uh, use Tor to express their speech or express uh, what they think. Uh, Tor also has uh, many, uh, uh, Tor also has access to many old literature or researches uh, which is not available on the open web. And it's like safe haven for journalists, obviously. And uh, so there are many popular sites like Facebook and my times that has their counterpart on Tor, like their dot any and website counterpart. So it's useful for uh, whistleblowers or activists. Uh, the second thing is uh, Tor is so many people think that it's illegal to access the dark web. Uh, so it's not illegal to access dark web. It's illegal to indulge in uh, these kind of activities like purchasing drugs or purchasing any other illegal things on the dark web that is being sold there but it's completely legal to access the dark web and it's like uh, the last thing which I would talk about is uh, many people think Tor is like really big but if you talk about the uptime or the availability of sites uh, there are very few reachable onion domains on the dark web uh, if you compare it with the clear web so it's like Tor is uh, uh, the dark web is like very little part of the internet uh, so we will talk about the dark side of the dark web I mean the criminal side of the dark web so there are many forums or marketplaces on the dark web uh, these are some of the relevant sites that's uh, relevant to security researchers or people uh, who want to access dark web for their uh, organization's benefit so uh, this is like uh, some of them are like credit card market so where different credit cards are being dumped or remote access so th these are these forums include uh, remote access trojans or some kind of remote access tools or uh, insider threats so insider threats are it's like recent coming up uh, a forum where insider like the people who are who are selling their company's secrets they talk amongst themselves so these are some of the relevant sites now coming to the cost so how much it costs for some kind of uh, so for something to uh, buy from the dark web so as you can see it's really easy to buy these things on the dark web and it so like SSN, uh, you can buy any SSN for one dollar or fake FB friends a fake FB with 15 friends uh, mobile malware, bank details, so uh, exploit to zero days. So it's like uh, uh, these type of things are easy to get on the dark web. That's why security researchers and other people are focusing more on the dark web. Uh, you might have heard about recent news like 500,000 Zoom accounts sold on the dark web or 267 million FB user profiles sold on the dark web. 
so there are many uh, data breaches occurring day by day and they are being sold on the dark web that's why researching on the dark web uh, is really important uh, these are some of the product listings uh, uh, from the forums of the dark web. This is how the products are being listed. Uh, uh, you can see these are the average cost of accounts for different online services like bank services. What's the average cost of it or what's the average cost of service for video games? Uh, this is the average cost of tools that is being sold on the dark web. As you can see again bank and financial average cost is $74 so you can buy a, a brute forcing tool for some bank at $74. Now coming to why you should hunt on the uh, before that uh, let's talk about what is threat hunting. So threat hunting is like uh, it's proactive searching for th cyber threats. Proactive means uh, before the attack happens that's proactive search. Uh, you search for cyber threats from logs or indicators of compromise that's IP addresses, emails, domains, etc. or textual data that's uh, that we are doing when we are searching the dark web. Uh, there's nothing so it's basically hypothesis based because there is nothing concrete about the process. Uh, you take one use case and work on it and then you take another use case and work on it and it goes uh, iteratively in the same way. Uh, many times uh, there's use of machine learning or natural language processing that's NLP and advanced analytics uh, uh, process in this because you need to uh, scan through the textual data if you are hunting on the dark web or if you're hunting on the clear web also but for textual data so machine learning uh, advanced analytics are useful there uh, so why it's serious so why threat hunting on the dark web is really important uh, what's so big about that so as i told you about again uh, there are many forums marketplaces dumb shops and where criminals uh, so what criminals or actors do they learn new methods and techniques on the dark web they monetize their skills they trade their exploits or tools or even drugs and weapons and uh, communication so they communicate within each other uh, with each other and they share their ideas for new attacks uh, a security researcher or a person who is uh, who is researching on the dark web he can find a lot on uh, he can learn a lot uh, while engaging within these communities uh, you can learn their uh, techniques or uh, ttps that's te uh, tactics techniques and procedures how they uh, think about the attack how they plan an attack and it can Identify, so if you do it correctly, it can identify attacks in the earlier stages. That's planning and recon stages and uh, you can reduce the impacts that it causes. So uh, if uh, suppose if your organization data is being sold on the dark web, there are different kinds of impacts that can cause uh, to your organization. So some of the direct impacts are like personal information uh, uh, stolen or healthcare records stolen or even your company's trade secrets. And some of the indirect impacts are uh, repetition of your organization, uh, revenue loss, and nowadays the legal penalties that your data is lost and you have to cover the cost of the customers. Uh, so this is uh, like, that's why this is really important to uh, uh, like to research on the dark web or uh, to hunt threats on the dark web. Uh, so, uh, on the same lines, uh, these are the benefits of the threat hunting. So, uh, if you do it correctly, you can keep up with the latest trends of the attacks. Uh, you can get new TTPs, that's tactics, techniques, and procedures. Uh, you can identify insider threats. You can discover data breaches. Uh, the main thing is you can prepare your SOCs and incident responders to uh, deal with the attack uh, because they will know before only uh, what are the TTPs attackers are using so they can reduce the damage and risk to the organization by acting quickly on that. So coming to the methods to hunt, or, hunt on the dark web. So we will discuss about some tools uh, that's used to hunt on the dark web and then we will discuss about the human element that can be used to hunt on the dark web. So talking about the first tool that's really really important for this is Scrapy. So it's a web web crawling framework 
it's uh, so famous it's so important because it uh, manages multi threading automatically so you don't have to write you don't have to spend too much time on the multi threading part uh, because it has already capabilities for multi threading using one or two lines of uh, one or two lines of uh, parameters uh, the second thing is tor obviously if you want to access the dark web you need tor uh, onion scan is an uh, another tool uh, that is used to search for uh, onion websites uh, it can uh, t uh, tell you if a website is up or not and the correlation between different websites on the dark web uh, coming to privacy so privacy is a, a web proxy uh, before getting more into this uh, so when you access the dark web you need some kind of proxy uh, to access the dark web because your isp uh, as i told you before the entry nodes are publicly listed so your isp, your ISP can have a blacklist to block the entry nodes so you can't access the dark web or even if he doesn't or even if the isp doesn't block it uh, he can see uh, whether you're accessing the dark web or not uh, uh, he cannot see what you are doing it on there but he can see uh, whether you're accessing dark web or not so you might not want that that's why you need some kind of proxy and a majority of uh, people use socks proxy so a uh, basic difference between http and source proxy is uh, socks proxy is a lower level proxy and it works on the socks protocol uh, http proxy only works on http or https websites but socks proxy can work on uh, uh, other Ox proxy can work on other protocols also and there are different tools to uh, use socks proxy like t socks polypo and privoxy i've been using privoxy and it has been uh, so i i'm uh, i don't have any problem with privoxy so and it's good so the uh, another thing is scrapey doesn't allow you to use directly socks proxy because it doesn't support Sox proxy so that's why you have to use uh, these tools like Privoxy, TSOX or Polypo to route your Sox through Privoxy scripts and uh, uh, there are other tools also like uh, uh, there are search engines like Kilos or Recon where you can find different onion domains uh, apart from using Sox proxy you can also use uh, a VPN with so uh, Tor uh, for extra layer of protection and hiding your uh, like encrypting your data uh, so getting more into scrapey part uh, uh, this image might seem little confusing but I will uh, get into it like step by step so uh, why script uh, so this is uh, like why scrapey is really important and why scrapey is so useful in uh, hunting on the dark web so if you can see there are, uh, so uh, for explaining this I will explain it in terms of uh, Python code so uh, suppose uh, the everything you see here is a different Python program so spider is a Python program downloader is a Python program middleware is a Python program and so on so what spiders uh, what spider does it uh, in a spider uh, so at uh, in a spider Python program you give your onion domain uh, on which you want to crawl the data or which you want to get the data so it gives it to the engine uh, the, uh, uh, suppose engine is just the program that manages every other Python programs so it gives the uh, it gives the onion domain to the engine uh, the engine gives it to the scheduler so what scheduler does is uh, here the multi threading concept comes into the picture uh, scheduler gets different domains and schedules it accordingly into multiple threads so the onion domains goes into the scheduler the scheduler uh, gives it back to the engine and engine gives it to the middleware so middleware program includes your proxy program and or login program so what proxy program is that uh, in proxy function so if we are talking about middleware that's a python program uh, there's a proxy function into it so proxy function is where you will uh, note uh, you will put down your uh, privacy ip or tor ip so that the request go request or response goes and comes through that proxy so that you can access the dark web uh, the login program the login function is uh, where you will put your user agents or cookies or so you, uh, for accessing the dark web forums uh, you have to 
so there uh, nowadays uh, for all the forums you have to have an account to access the dark web or to access that particular forum so to access the forum you need some kind of cookies or also there are many uh, forums uh, many high level forums that uh, implement captchas and as google doesn't work on the dark web so these captchas are like image based captcha or text based captcha that is easy to bypass so you use it, uh, you can use any machine learning uh, captcha bypassing service or any captcha bypassing websites like death by captcha or anti captcha uh, to bypass the captcha so these all codes you will write in this uh, login uh, login uh, function in middleware program now the uh, your request or uh, your traffic goes through this middleware program to the downloader uh, what downloader does it, it's a simple uh, program to extract the html and save and give it back to the engine so downloader extract the html and gives it back to the engine uh, now engine gives it back to the spider uh, now there is another uh, another function in spider that extracts the html entities that you want from the uh, from the forums html like uh, suppose forum name or uh, document id or uh, the text based data or author name who post uh, who posted a particular content so you get that and it is called items in scrapy so you get these items and it sends it to the item pipeline item pipeline is where uh, your database is configured so i use elasticsearch you can use any database whether sql or NoSQL, and it directly saves the items to the SQL and so the important thing to note here is that uh, scrape, so as I told you before multi-threading multi -threading is automatically handled by Scrapy then another thing is uh, you don't have to give multiple onion domains to spider uh, so uh, when the downloader gets the data when the downloader gets the HTML page from the uh, for a particular forum it also uh, there is a code uh, you don't have to configure the code there is a code to get all the onion domains on that particular html page so the schedule automatically schedules the other onion domains to go through the same process again again in this way you don't have to give uh, extra onion domains to the engine and this is why scrapy is like really useful uh, in uh, like crawling data from the dark web and there are different uh, so you can specify which domain to crawl and which domain to block uh, in this way you can be safe from uh, getting illegal data or getting illegal images so moving on uh, now comes the human part so if it uh, uh, so uh, we discuss about the tools what tools can you use to hunt on the dark web uh, there uh, there is a human element also that's called human intelligence or humint uh, so it's like it's the process of gathering intelligence through interpersonal contact uh, interpersonal contact uh, rather by some kind of tools or technical process uh, that's why it's the most it's most dangerous and difficult form because you are directly talking to the actor uh, on the dark web uh, which is not safe uh, and it's uh, it's not safe because you don't want your uh, identity to be revealed uh, to the actor or you don't want your organization's identity to be to be revealed on uh, to the actor and it's important also because you can identify and respond to attacks much quickly uh, you can do post attack investigation so suppose you, uh, uh, your organization uh, like there is a data breach on your organization uh, if you want to confirm so someone is selling this data on the dark web and if you want to confirm whether they are selling the correct uh, whether they are whether they are uh, lying about it or whether it is the truth so you can activate your human intelligence or activate your the guy that is uh, researching on the dark web to go and ask to the actors whether the data is correct or not so that's post attack investigation or uh, you can also use it for new attacker vector uh, new attack vector discovery so that's uh, discovering new ttps that the attackers are using or the attackers are discussing about uh, you can assume is uh, as a high tech equivalent of what an fbi agent does when he like spends months or years working to infiltrate uh, criminal organization uh, that's why it's uh, really hard to do it uh, because you have to spend so much time on it and that's why it's risky 
and uh, this uh, for this you have to think like an uh, actor uh, how they communicate within these communities uh, how they act within these communities and uh, the another thing is like it's uh, the uh, source from this is really valuable to your organization's safety now uh, moving on uh, so uh, we talked about tools we talked about human intelligence part now comes the pipeline or the architecture of how you can automate the uh, these uh, threat hunting uh, so before that uh, yeah, uh, so uh, i would suggest to set up a different system uh, you don't want your personal data to be on the system where you are uh, doing threat hunting so you can set up any lab or vm uh, whether physical or whether on cloud uh, just isolate the network and install relevant tools like Scrapy, Privoxy, Tor. Uh, if you are doing, if you are using uh, Elasticsearch or Kibana, then Elk and different Python libraries that would be necessary for your task. So this is the automated architecture uh, that I have been using it. Uh, I will go it one by one. So and I have this automate uh, icon. Uh, for the task that can be automated and for the task that I don't have that's the only one I think scrapey setup and the design train NLP model so it's hard to automate that part so I will discuss it through so first of all uh, you need to get the forums uh, forum links or the market links so uh, you can write a simple script to gather data from different search engines like I told you recon uh, and uh, other search engines uh, where you can get all the forum links uh, so that can be automated uh, so uh, another thing is using Sox proxy like I told you you have to use some kind of Sox proxy for this so you can get Sox proxies IP uh, again you can write a simple script uh, and get the Sox proxies uh, that can be automated now comes the part of scrapey setup uh, so scrapey setup is uh, is the uh, so here you will write your uh, login functions here you will uh, get your proxy setups and here you will uh, like manage the settings of the scrapy now you can't automate this because uh, when you get the onion links or uh, different forum onion links you have to go to the forums and sign in uh, yes you can automate the uh, you can uh, write scripts for logging in or signing in uh, f using different accounts but uh, I found it uh, difficult to do this that's why I just uh, I have been using it a manual I have been doing it manually so like uh, cre creating different accounts like four to five accounts per forum and then noting down that into the scrapey like the username password and cookies into scrapey uh, so for this you have to do this also you need different uh, scrapers for different forums because the architecture of forums is different for uh, different forums uh, that's why you need to uh, do this step manually uh, because you need to analyze you need to first log into the forum analyze it and then uh, uh, write uh, a different function for each forum uh, for the HTML elements that you want to access uh, coming to the crawler part so what crawler uh, it's uh, so the crawler parser analyzer it's uh, and the ELK part it's all the part of the scrapey that I discussed you before so these all uh, are part of the scrapey system uh, I've just written it differently so you, you can understand what each part does so what crawler does is again it crawls HTML pages from the forums parser does it parses the HTML pages like getting the HTML elements like post, post content, author, uh, etc. And the analyzer. So analyzer part is the part you can write different function for this in Scrapy. So what analyzer does is so uh, suppose you got the data from the uh, from the dark web forum. Now you need to uh, use some kind of techniques to evaluate the content that is relevant to your organization or relevant to your threat model so we will discuss what threat modeling is uh, in the later part of the uh, presentation so uh, for now just understand there is uh, you can't uh, focus on every other threat that's out there uh, you have to focus on threats that is relevant to your organization so you need to do some kind of analysis to uh, 
like get the data uh, get the relevant data from the dark web so here comes the nlp model uh, that's i uh, that i've been using so you can design or uh, train your nlp model uh, in this way that it can just get you the content that is relevant to your organization uh, uh, so you don't uh, so uh, suppose if you are a bank you don't want to focus on uh, tools or uh, you don't want to focus on data breaches that's not relevant to your bank uh, you most likely would want to focus on the dump shops that's where credit cards or debit cards are being dumped so in this way different organizations have different requirements and you want to focus on those now designing and training an NLP model can't be automated because you need some kind of content before uh, content relevant to your third model and then you need to uh, train your NLP model on that it's like so it's the same thing it's somewhat like uh, either you get the data first or you design your model first so it's like egg and chicken problem but uh, nowadays there are many nlp models like uh, seeded lda where you can provide your uh, provide like some kind of context before training the NLP model so it's easy to do, uh, do that and then you store the data into elk so these all things uh, can be automated uh, so coming to the part after uh, getting this data so what's the process after hunting now we'll discuss a little about threat intelligence life cycle uh, so what threat intelligence life cycle is these are different steps uh, that your organization takes uh, to build a uh, to like it starts from getting the data uh, till uh, presentation of the data uh, so uh, how threat hunting on the dark web corresponds to this is uh, in the so there are like four, five phases as you can see direction collection processing analysis and dissemination uh, what we are doing is we are doing direction phase from the hum human sources like you can see from dark web social media forums uh, so in the direction phase we identify dark web forums uh, we register on those forums we acquire access on those forums uh, in the collection phase you use scrapy to establish access and collect raw data processing phase is also in script using scrapy so you parse uh, raw html data uh, you extract topics and authors and the analysis phase is where we use NLP and other machine learning models to infer relationship between these data. Uh, the we get data that is relevant to our organization. Uh, we link data sources. We identify trends and hacks and leaks, etc. And dissemination phase is where we visualize the data in dashboards. If you are using Kibana uh, or other kind of dashboards, uh, we. Uh, give out alerts and reports for our higher managers or the uh, other people to see in in our organization so if talking uh, so this is like crux of what threat hunting on the dark web maps to threat intelligence life cycle now threat modeling as i told you i was going to talk about this in the coming presentation so what threat modeling is it's like get, uh, like getting your organization's uh, critical assets uh, and focusing on your organization's critical asset so it's like uh, understanding threats and how you can mitigate it when uh, it happens to your organization particularly so you understand what attacker wants uh, what different critical assets you have in your organization uh, what are different types of actors that can target you whether they would be hacktivists or insiders or some kind of criminal groups uh, and know their capability Ch you choose your so here you choose your target on the dark web uh, whether you want to uh, whether you uh, so if you are bank you focus on credit card markets if you are some other organization if you want you focus on inside the threat markets or you focus on general markets so in this way you choose your target on the dark web uh, you prioritize risk as you can uh, use pyramid of pain for that uh, so you prioritize risk and uh, focus on iocs that are relevant to your organization uh, another thing is uh, you don't 
just use one source to target like there are many many forums on the dark web uh, you don't just focus on one uh, target you focus on multiple targets uh, apart from dark web you uh, focus on multiple clear web sites also like pastebin or twitter or nowadays te on telegram also many these uh, many actors are communicating so you focus on the dark web also and the clear web also to get all the things you can for uh, protecting your organization so again data collection processing you collect data from the clear web and the dark web uh, so some of the sites are pastebin twitter reddit uh, on the dark web it's forums market uh, different forums and different marketplaces you can do all this using the scrapey crawler and parser that we discussed before uh, the analysis part uh, in the threat intelligence model is uh, you use uh, nlp like i told you before you use nlp machine learning or deep learning techniques uh, some of them are like lda bird gpt uh, to gather information related to your organization uh, you use uh, you analyze uh, you use social network analysis for analy analysis of uh, different users on the dark web that post uh, data related to your organization uh, there's clustering of products according to categories uh, for the clustering thing you classify different uh, uh, so there's like binary classification multi class classification so that's how you classify different products being sold on the dark web so these all thing comes under analysis uh, i will touch a little uh, on mitre attack framework so what mitre attack is it's the it's a knowledge base of um, knowledge base of uh, all the ttps uh, that's uh, uh, that was built uh, using real world observations so it contains uh, tact different tactics techniques and procedures that the attackers have used uh, all these years so you use attack matrix to map the intelligence you obtained uh, to understand the TTPs better and to protect your organization uh, more. So now coming to the operation security stuff. So hunting on the dark web or if you are doing human intelligence stuff on the dark web, uh, you need to follow some set of uh, processes uh, so that you don't uh, reveal your data uh, you don't reveal your identity or your organization identity as i talked before so what is opsec so uh, opsec is the practice of hiding yourself online uh, so that uh, you don't reveal your uh, you don't reveal your real self or you don't reveal or compromise your own operations uh, it's derived from the uh, us military or uh, that's operation security uh, you need to defend. Uh, you need to hide your uh, PIA. That's personal information, uh, personal identifiable information. So you need to hide. Uh, you need to work on the uh, dark web in such uh, in such way that you don't disclose your full name or driver's license or bank account or even a uh, simple thing as email. Uh, this is what you need to protect, and that's why operational security is really important and uh, it's also a hard thing to do because at the end of the day we are all humans and uh, we like to be seen as knowledgeable and we like to impress others uh, this all things leads to gossip gossiping bragging and oversharing with others uh, that's why operation security is really hard and uh, uh, most of the time people think of it as a process so uh, people think that uh, okay i have to do human intelligence stuff now i have to follow operation security uh, it should not be like that uh, it should not be uh, seemed as a burden uh, to perform or as another of your job task to perform it should be a mindset uh, like you should always think about operation security before doing human intelligence or before uh, engaging with actors uh, so some uh, i will discuss some of the things that can that you can use to maintain opsec in your daily lifestyle uh, there are many other things so the main thing you want is uh, hiding your identity so the first thing you can do or you should do uh, you should do is use separate system uh, like i told uh, talked about before also use separate system where you don't store any personal information 
uh, you whether it, whether uh, be it a lab or VM or some kind of system, uh, the main thing is to use uh, Tor uh, uh, with a proxy or Tor over VPN. Uh, the uh, the main thing is maintaining different personas on the dark web. So it's uh, like I told, it's uh, an equivalent of an FBI agent going undercover. So he has some kind of persona. He has a backstory. You have to do that. You have to do the same thing. You should have different personas for different identities that you have on different forums. Uh, you should never mix it up. That's why you have uh, like that's why you take extensive notes so that you don't mess up the personas and uh, so you should always watch what you say uh, and you should always think before posting uh, you should uh, so it's a uh, human intelligence or opsec human intelligence is not a 95 job thing uh, you can't just talk to or you can't just communicate to actors uh, during your job time uh, because they will know that you are doing uh, this as a as your job i mean uh, in this way you can be exposed uh, they can easily guess uh, that you are a researcher and not a threat actor and that's why uh, like it would be a tip a tip off for them that's why you have to uh, like do this work 24 by 7 or it's not like you have to uh, do this work on the weekends you have to do this work after your work hours uh, that's why it's not a, a 9 to 5 job thing and uh, you have to like develop appropriate language skills because people on the dark web they don't talk formally like actors don't talk formally so you have to develop appropriate language skills or slang skills also there are many uh, forums like there are different uh, Russian forums or German forums so you might need to develop that language skills uh, like learning Russian learning uh, German uh, another thing to note is uh, changing time zones so if you are uh, suppose if you are in US and you are accessing or you are engaging in a community on a Russian forum you might want to change the time zone to Russia uh, because uh, again it would be a tip off to the actors that you are a security researcher or that you are not a real actor so these are some of the things that should be noted before doing human intelligence stuff on the dark web now that was it so concluding all this uh, we discussed a little about the dark web what dark web is how to access dark web uh, we discussed about dark web forums and marketplaces what different products are being sold there uh, what is the cost model around that uh, we discuss about threat hunting on the dark web uh, how you can hunt on the dark web uh, we discuss different tools and uh, the ma main tool was scrapy that's the main framework that we are uh, that we are working on uh, to hunt on the dark web we discuss about human intelligence how it can be used or how it should be used to uh, support your tool based and a tool based uh, data collection uh, we discuss about the pipeline or the architecture that can be used to automate the dark web hunting uh, we talked a little about uh, uh, a threat intelligence life cycle how threat hunting on the dark web maps to the life cycle steps and we talked about operational security and why it is so important and why it is so hard to uh, do operational security uh, again some more uh, points to notice it's obviously threat hunting on the dark web is hard but it's worth the effort uh, you don't get intelligence that you get from the dark web uh, you should always keep operational security in mind and you should look so like I said before you should look on uh, more than one resource you should look on forums you, could, you should look on clear web forums also like pastebin and uh, telegram as an example and you should look on uh, different other forums on the dark web also uh, it takes a lot of resources and a team effort you can't do all these things alone you should have a team for this and we talked a little about usage of MITRE attack framework and how to map your how uh, you can how it can be useful to map the TTPs uh, map your TTPs to that uh, these are some of the resources uh, that 
I suggest you to read if you want to know more about the dark web stuff or dark web hunting stuff. Uh, the majority, the major ones are like a recorded feature insight, crowd strike, digital shadows. Uh, they release their blogs or white papers regularly. So read them and you will understand what all things are there on the dark web. So yeah, uh, uh, that was it. I think, uh, thank you so much. I hope you all like my presentation and uh, you can contact me on Twitter or LinkedIn if you have any doubt or if you want to discuss about this stuff more. I will hang on in Discord uh, to answer all your questions. So yeah, uh, thank you.